everybody and welcome to the final demo for the Arclight 2019 work cycle. Uh, just to give you some background, um, as many of you know, uh, Arclight is a project that was initiated by Stanford in 2014 uh, to address a long-standing interest relating to discovery and delivery of uh, Arclight material. Um, we had a design phase from 2014 to 2017 and, uh, with the University of Michigan we developed, an eight, uh, we developed a minimum viable product in an eight-week work cycle uh, in 2017. Um, I also want to acknowledge a lot of the work that's gone in from the community since then. So this includes uh, evaluation and test implementations at the Bentley Historical Library and Duke University, um, as well as a full production implementation at University of Albany. Um, in 2019, we saw growing interest from four institutions, uh, Duke University, University of Michigan, Indiana University, and Princeton University, uh, that all um, are, you know, are particularly interested in contributing to uh, the, the work uh, to meet local needs in relation to discovery uh, and delivery of local material. So uh, overall, um, the reason why we're here is to build on the past work, um, both the design work and the implementation of the minimum viable product. So uh, we know that there was a pretty significant uh, gap in features uh, between um, sort of what people wanted or expected and what, and what people needed uh, to actually get ArcLight into production of their uh, local institution. Um, we also found through these conversations that there were similar needs and timelines across institutions. While in some cases, there was mostly no immediate pressure, there was a lot of desire to move things forward much sooner. Um, in addition, there was also a common a challenge around outdated discovery systems. So uh, legacy applications that were becoming increasingly difficult to maintain and a desire to replace that. So all this came together to provide us with an opportunity to, to look at collaboration as, as an option for us to move further, further ahead together. So the elevator pitch for this work cycle is uh, to focus on a collaborative effort by five institutions uh, that focuses on developing an open source solution for our whole discovery. We're building on past work to build a proof, uh, to proof of concept, and this work cycle specifically is focused on implementing, improving usability and accessibility, analyzing integration needs for archival systems, and acting, activating and developing the community of individual and institutional contributors to the project. As part of the conversations that we had in planning for this work cycle, we established a, a roadmap document. So that is here. Um, uh, I'll give you a, a brief overview of this, but this this is just how we how we started, which is the spreadsheet to to document um, high level requirements or, and concerns um, as we were planning for the scope of the work cycle. This led us to have a, a higher level focus on the project scope. Um, so, as I mentioned, a, a big issue for for us was addressing usability and accessibility improvements. If you were to look at the road mapping spreadsheet, there are a number of things that are in what I'd say are very granular pieces of feedback. Um, we also noticed similar feedback um, in some of the analysis work by both the Bentley Historical Library at Michigan as well as the University of Albany's implementation. So this, you know, a lot of this relates to usability concerns and making the, the application much more clear. Um, 
while uh, you can look at the, the road mapping spreadsheet for more context, I think two important things to note on this end include uh, addressing the reusability of long contents lists, um, so uh, making them easier to navigate, and restyling non-clickable elements. Uh, we also wanted to have a clear focus on uh, rewriting the indexing tooling. So previously, uh, the indexer code that we used was backed by a Ruby gem called Solar EAD, um, which is on, uh, uh, based on some deprecated components from the Sambura community. Uh, part of this is we wanted to make it easier also for people to develop their own indexing rules for their institution to allow us to better support other kinds of source data. Um, so while our focus on this work cycle was really around EAD 2002, we believe this should make it significantly easier to index data from that's an EAD3 um, mark data or data directly from the archive space API. We also wanted to do work on analyzing and improving and relevance ranking, um, given some feedback about it not being totally clear how uh, results were being returned and in what order they were being returned. Um, there was a strong desire, particularly from uh, Princeton, Michigan, and Indiana uh, to analyze and integrate with request management systems, especially Aon, um, given local needs to uh, better integrate uh, public services workflows. We also had a, long, a, a big desire to, to address technical debt, um, which had accumulated in applications since it had been quite some time since we had worked on it. We also established a number of other things as out of scope. Um, a lot of these included things that, which felt rather institution specific um, that were not shared concerns. Uh, for example, uh, looking at, you know, we initially talked about uh, providing a way to get data out for aggregators, but identif likely identified that there were better ways outside of the context of ArcLight to do that. Um, and uh, this work cycle, work cycle specifically was not intended to uh, provide a full re release in production for each institution, but uh, provide as an important sort of process in the way for that. I also want to emphasize that we, we did work on localization, so be to better support um, a translated user interface uh, for ArcLight in multiple languages. Uh, so from, from here, um, I'm going to pass it over to Jennifer and Gary to talk about um, uh, some of the work that we did uh, in terms of design changes at, at a high level. Okay. Um, so, so Mark mentioned that um, the phase one um, work cycle sort of uh, was a, an eight-week segment in, um, when was it, 2017? Um, and it, with the hard stop, we kind of um, left it at a point where we ha hadn't actually finished the design, let alone the implementation. So it was kind of at a very much minimum bio pro product level, but not really fully articulated in the way that we wanted it to be. Um, and so our starting point for phase two was to actually look at the, the, the sites that had done um, some level of evalu evaluation or actually implementation. Um, certainly Albany um, had some inspiration for us and we went through all of the um, feedback that was provided and sort of um, articulated kind of what are the, the, the key points out of those. And we narrowed that down into um, some really key issues to address because we couldn't address every single issue in, in this also constrained work cycle. So we kind of focused on um, some very key things, um, primarily the, um, um, the navigation of the collection from all points within the collection and, um, and the presentation of online content, um, which relates to uh, Mark's point earlier about non-clickable elements. So this was our starting point. This was what the application looked like when we started. This is a component page for a collection. So the Alpha Omega ar archives um, at the collection level. So 
the main issue that we wanted to address before we kind of got started with anything else was the overall layout. Um, we, especially based on um, some work that Albany did, which we thought kind of clarified some issues for us and gave us some inspiration for some of the things that we went forward with. We realize that this page is um, pretty busy. Um, it's very difficult to focus on what the core elements are. Um, there's a breadcrumb at the top that's redundant with the title. There's identification information in a couple of different places. Um, and then the lower part of the screen is divided into two sections, the sidebar and, um, and this tabbed section, which is in the in the context of things is sort of deprecated where it's actually the, the core content and it's not really visible that these are tabs. Um, so we wanted to address kind of um, just cleaning up this general layout in order to give us the room to actually address the, the usability issues. So, um, so the outcome of that was something like this. And this is a mock-up, but you'll see the um, live version in a little bit. We've cleaned up the top area. You'll see there's that we reduced sort of the boxing and, um, and removed some redundant and unnecessary elements, and then created this consistent place for tools related to this specific level of the collection that you're looking at. So this might have a request button. It might have download options. It always has a bookmark option. Um, but it has whatever is um, appropriate for this level always in the same place. The sidebar is gone and that content has been represented elsewhere. So the, um, the search within this collection now, we, um, you don't see it in this mockup, but we found a way to present it up in the, um, in the main search area so that it's now available for many more locations within the application and not as constrained as it was. Um, the navigation overview actually is part of the overview tab, and so we, we integrated it into that tab. Um, and then the static information down at the bottom that was present on every single page, um, every single component page, we integrated into a, a new tab called Access, which shows um, any restrictions, terms of access, and the location of the collection, and so on. So that's still always present at every um, level of the collection um, hierarchy, but it is um, not so, it's not taking up uh, key real estate on the screen at all times. So now we've got a cleaner um, sort of canvas to work with, I guess. And so uh, we strengthened the visibility of the tabs. Um, and so then we could get into, um, the, the core issues about presenting the hierarchy of information. And so I'm going to jump down now to a very low level in the collection. This is a component page. This is the before. And the um, you'll see that the, the breadcrumb that's the age of the row and has some redundancy and maybe some unnecessary elements in it. Um, again, the box around the, um, the title that slightly obscures it the sidebar, and then the, the, the critical element for, um, for this level of the hierarchy is we wanted to show where it was in the collection. And we did that by providing a little snapshot of here's the parent, here are a couple of siblings, just so you can sort of see what's around this and what its parent is. The problem with this is that it's not actually interactive and as we got very strong feedback in, to indicate that it doesn't give enough context and it, it is ultimately a dead end at this point. So once you've reached this point in the hierarchy, there's, it's very difficult to get to anywhere else in the hierarchy from this point. So when we address that um, in a couple of ways, first of all, we followed the, um, the model of Albany in splitting out the, um, the breadcrumb into a clear hierarchy with the indentation that shows exactly where you are now. So we did the same thing in our, excuse me, um, in our um, new design where we follow the hierarchy down, highlight where you are now, 
and show any metadata about this specific um, this specific level of the collection immediately below the title. So above the tabs, but um, below the title so that you can see it in context. Um, but the important thing is that now the collection context is a tab and it's showing the place where you are in the collection, still highlighted, but it also shows the entire remainder of the collection below it and provides an expand feature to show the remainder of the collection above it. So this now turns into the same collection tree that you saw that, that is present on the, um, on the um, collection page where you can navigate the entire collection by opening and closing elements of the, um, of the um, tree so at the um at the item level now we're seeing the um the full collection content we can navigate to any point in the collection we can navigate up the tree using the um the the hierarchy above the um the current element and we can navigate down and sideways in the tree using what's in the collection content tab so um, so, and you can see as you go down this, this uh, hierarchy builds here. So there's a better presentation of the hierarchy. Um, there's no dead end. You can see where this section is in the context of the hierarchy um, at any point. So that was our, um, that was our approach to address the navigation and the collection tree issues. Um, we also did a lot of work um, that, um, you'll see in a minute around um, making the presentation of information in the collection tree and the search results and elsewhere in the application consistent um, in its presentation. So, um, which I think also helps um, to clarify kind of what you're looking at at any given point. Um, I'm going to show this in context, um, which will also help me move on to the, the, the online content aspect. So here's the live application um, showing I can go up and down in this series and I can open it and I can look at um, the collection context and I can choose anything below this and if I go down into the tree, I can show you the expand feature. And I'm looking here, I like that this is called phase two expansion because that was basically this project. Um, but you'll see now I'm looking at the collection context. It's identifying this segment of the um, tree that I'm looking at, but I also have the ability to expand to show what was collapsed in there so that when you look at this collection context, you're always seeing um, exactly where you are um, with anything that, that kind of would um, we didn't want to push the, the, the current context down out of view. So we've, collapsed it into a segment here that you can expand to see the entire tree above and below um, where you are. Um, but I also want to look at now um, the online content. The old presentation of online content, um, let me see. So here's an example. We had these um, labels that indicated that this element had online content. And it was just meant to be a label that says, hey, there's stuff here. And there's a tab that actually lists the online content. So this tab shows you what's present. It's at a second remove from the, the when you load the page, it's not the immediate thing that you see. And people were confusing this, this label with a button and expecting it to do something when of course it's just a label. So what we ended up with was um, a different approach. When you are, we, we made a distinction between online content at this component level and children, child components of this level that have online content. So we have two distinct things happening here. When you are looking at a component that has direct online content, we show it immediately above the tab. So this is a collection that has a DAO at the collection level that gives you a slideshow, um, which I won't connect to right now. Um, the online content tab 
shows you the children, the child elements of this collection that have online content. So if I jump to this item now, this is a child item that has no further children. So it doesn't have a tab saying there's more online content below, um, but it does have its own online content directly um, above the, um, the tabs here. So we've treated the direct content as sort of part of this item so that you don't have to click to a second level to see it. And we've um, separated out the children that have online content so that you can directly see at a collection level everything in this collection that has online elements. Within the entire collection tree, we've just used a small icon to indicate the presence of online content so that it's not a clickable appearing label. It's just an icon that says there's something in here that's online. And as you go down the, the, the tree, you'll see down to the file level, the things that are online. Um, I think I'm running long here, but I just want to show quickly also what we did with, um, with search results. And um, here you can see I'm looking at the live application now. You can see I'm within a collection. Um, and I didn't mean to be <laughs> so, um, but what I've got is a search within this collection. So if I actually searched for, um, I don't remember what's in alpha, let's try alpha. Um, within this collection, now I've constrained um, my search to this collection. I can expand it to search all collections at the top level now. And now I'm seeing the search results that have um, all of the, um, that have this search term across all of the collections. Another aspect that we were asked to address in the, um, in the um, search results was the ability to group results by collection because it's entirely possible that you can find an item in a collection that matches a search term without its collection itself being presented, represented in the search results. So, Grouping elements by collection lets you see um, easily which collections are represented and which ones are the most relevant to the search. So this is showing us all of the search, all of the collections in the, um, in the results and the individual um, items below it. And then I can expand that to see only the elements within the collection that I selected. Um, we've also taken the, um, the search results and simplified them a little bit. Um, let's see if I have a before of that here. Um, so the search result used to look like this, um, they, with the blocks and, um, um, and the breadcrumb in front of the title. Um, we simplified that now so that the title is always the first element. The breadcrumb is lower in the result. And if it is not relevant to a specific display, it doesn't show. Um, and the layout of the, um, the icons and the box ID and the breadcrumbs and so on is consistent throughout um, all displays, whether it's in a tab or in the search results. And um, we've also highlighted the, um, the um, extent indicator if there is one um, for a collection um, which actually helps to kind of visually show when there is um, when something is a higher level than something else in the collection um, I think that's all I'm going to show because I think I've gone way over time and I'm going to pass it back to Mark now uh, just to walk you through a couple more things um, Again, the, as Jennifer showed you, um, even the home page looks slightly different um, because we do have this additional widget that allows you to specify um, in other contexts whether you're going to search across all collections or within a given collection. Um, so for example, if uh, we've made some changes, some other changes that I want to highlight to the search results. So for example, uh, Jennifer showed you um, uh, the grouping by collection. Uh, we've made changes to the, this list view. So, for example, this breadcrumb is a, we believe, believe to be a lot more clearer. 
uh, for example, um, and uh, this group, uh, the grouping by collection is one of the things that has become really, really important uh, for, for this work cycle. Again, I think part of the context here is that not only was this a change um, to better provide sort of a, an overview of how things were, sort of how results were available, um, we're also hoping that this will in part address some better issues about uh, some better understandings of, of how relevance is actually applied. Uh, we've also had some discussion, um, but are, are looking um, for individual implementers to give us feedback on how to approach relevance uh, across group results. Another thing I want to note is there's also this new compact view, which applies to both grouping things by collections, um, as well as the all results views. Um, so let's see if I can go over here, for instance. Um, this compact view just reduces the amount of information. And for, so, for example, this is also customizable. So if you wish to, to hide things like the highlighted search results, you can certainly do that. So, um, and then this is a, a, a view of the, the compact search results that are currently grouped by collections. Um, in terms of collections and components, uh, here's an example, again, that's from the live demo um, application of uh, a collection level page. Um, uh, the 11 papers from the Bentley Historical Library are actually a really good example of this because this is one of the largest finding aids that we had. So uh, the, the two things that I think are, that are really important to note about this is that I think we have successfully mitigated a lot of the performance concerns both from an indexing basis as well as a, a presentation basis. So for example, if you were to look at the contents page here, you know, you'll see that um, if we were to expand some of these levels like congressional papers, these actually go quite deep and some of these uh, sub-series are quite large and it's actually pretty, pretty snappy. So, um, so for example, if we were to click through to one of these, uh, you'll see this uh, indented breadcrumb trail um, as you've seen before. So, uh, this is also an example of where you see the expanded collection context tree. So here's cases where you can see the, the current level that this page is associated with is highlighted down below. And as you need, you can expand uh, additional, these additional series to get more context about where you are. Um, uh, major updates since the the last demo and uh, our a lot of this work uh, towards the very end of the work cycle was going into uh, related to addressing the expanding and collapsing this hierarchy both in this view and on the collection page um, this uh, we've also really improved how to how to give that contextual information about where you are in the collection uh, in terms of um, the online content tab, I go back to the collection level results. Um, one of the things that you'll see is that this now only shows uh, online contents um, at the given component or level. Um, so it also, and it also allows you to give, get more information about the descendant, uh, descendants that have online content. So for example, we've now, this indicator is now much smaller here. Um, but this specifies, for example, that there's online content uh, associated with, with this series um, and these subsequent subseries. Uh, in, in addition, we've also addressed the performance concern for the online content tab by being able to page through these as sets of results. The other thing is we have let me see if I can go back here. So this is a case where at, we're looking at a certain series level description. There's now an additional badge in this context that specifies the number of uh, online items that are associated with that. 
In addition to this work, uh, we've also undertaken a, an accessibility review and addressed issues related to uh, the responsive layout. Uh, Jennifer talked about the search bar updates and the changes to searching within collections. Um, I also want to talk a little bit more about the action box. So the cases that were, uh, in addition to bookmarking, um, as you can probably imagine, the things that we're looking at uh, relate to providing access to either um, EAD files or other versions of finding aids, such as PDFs, um, and access to tools to request. So for example, um, through a configuration file, which allows you to set both reasonable defaults um, and specific rules for specific finding aids, um, we are able then to then point to this external link um, for this finding aid from the University of Michi Michigan Special Collections Research Center. Uh, we also have been enabled this, AON, uh, this link to, which pr provides a link to an AON request form. So if I were to click that, I will get an off screen. Um, and in this case, uh, this is an AON integration with uh, web hosted EAD files. So rather than directly passing information about a given component or a given container, um, the, the current implementation at University of Michigan Special Collections really relies on this external uh, EAD file. However, uh, the AON integration work that we've also done but is not currently represented in the, in the live demo application is that we've also integrated with, uh, to allow for single requests across uh, AON, AON's external request endpoint. So this will uh, allow you to pass information such as uh, the title of the collection, the title of the component, uh, information like the repository, barcode information, and so forth. Um, and will then uh, allow you to, uh, to generate that request natively. Uh, I believe it's also not represented in the live demo, but uh, localization support um, has included work on to provide a language picker. Um, this work has both been, uh, was originally intended for our flight, but also has been abstracted out for uh, as a more generic blacklight gem that can be brought into other applications to support localization. Um, I also want to emphasize um, in terms of changes both in ArcLight and, and upstream Blacklight, a lot of the accessibility work that we've done um, has, has happened both within ArcLight as a code base as well as, as, well as upstream. Um, finally, um, uh, just a, another note on our indexing pipeline. Uh, we're currently using Traject, um, which is uh, an open source uh, transformation library that's well suited for indexing data into solar. And as I've noted, this has given us uh, significant performance improvements in the ability to parallelize um, the indexing of our core description. Uh, in terms of any other changes since the last demo, um, uh, uh, I think the only other things to add were uh, lots of cleanup of significant um, unused uh, JavaScript and uh, SDSS code. Um, I want to recognize um, Sean's work to include uh, EAD, uh, to EAD list to HTML formatting in particular, uh, both in uh, indexing and, and through, the, through the presentation. Um, we've also done some work to simplify indexing of a few specific elements, such as acquisitions info from EAD. And we've uh, uh, improved performance further by uh, uh, removing facet, uh, facets to solo requests when they're not needed. And uh, with that, I think we're just about at the end of the demo. Um, it's just a quick overview of the project team. Again, we had many contributions um, across the five institutions, and I want to recognize uh, everybody's involvement, um, uh, especially uh, the developers um, and product owners from other institutions. Uh, thanks also go to uh, Steering for resourcing this uh, accordingly. Uh, just and finally, uh, just a quick overview of where we are um, in terms of uh, things that were the highest level priorities, uh, the, uh, which sort of represent the, let's say, the left 
uh, four fifth or the right four fifths of the screen. Um, uh, the one thing that we did not uh, address um, that was a, a pretty key priority for Indiana in particular was the additional layer to reflect organizational hierarchy in, in the repositories. Um, otherwise, um, we, uh, we were able to deliver all of our highest priority items and think a number of these things, including support to, for multilingual description, site maps, um, and EAD3 support should be much easier with, uh, to accomplish with feature work on our flight. Uh, uh, one final note, um, we also recognize that probably additional work needs to happen on, on indexing uh, quality assurance. So, uh, and addressing relevance concerns. We do note that any of these things are actually high, highly configurable and have worked, done a lot of work on documenting this to make it easier to figure out how to move forward. Um, that said, you know, we expect that there may be some shared work that can happen, but a lot of this really kind of depends on what your local concerns and requirements are. And with that, um, that concludes the demo. So. Thank <laughs> you.